Hello and welcome to my latest video. So in this video uh, I'm going to be taking a look at the Golden Demon that just happened uh, this past weekend and also giving a few of my thoughts about the uh, the Warhammer, Fe Warhammer Fest event itself. Um, it's the, uh, the first time it's been held in Manchester. I think it was previously set to be in Birmingham and this is the first proper uh, Warhammer Fest since Covid happened. So they did have a Golden Demon last year uh, but that was in Warhammer World and that was a much kind of like smaller event this was like a, a proper Warhammer Fest or um, Games Day actually if you're, if you're old like me but it was um, it was pretty cool the uh, the Manchester Arena is uh, definitely sizable and especially for things like the uh, the Golden Demon Awards ceremony at the end uh, the room they had for that was really really nice uh, and made it feel much more special um, for me, I, I was missing the uh, design staff. Uh, so it used to be if you went to uh, like a, an open day type event or you know the other Warhammer Fests and things like that, they they used to have the artists, the authors, uh, the sculptors, all these uh, kind of people that you know bring the the Warhammer hobby uh, to life, uh, and they would be there and they'd have their portfolios. You can go and chat to them, um, you know see what they're, they're thinking the reasons behind what they've done um, and you know just admire their work it, you know it was a really nice it was one of my favorite things actually about uh, these events and uh, those are no longer there now now you might find some of these people walking around the event um, but they'll be there as uh, the same as you as like a, a general public person uh, so it's it's not quite the same thing um, but apart from that the uh, the event itself was it was pretty nice. The only other thing I would say is that there were a lot of queues. Uh, so for for this one, they have the the new Warhammer Forty Thousand Leviathan uh, box game, and I think that was a, a big draw. Lots of people came up to see the new models, and be, uh, Games Workshop, knowing that people had come to see that, they had put in uh, some uh, test games, but I think there were only about five tables for it, so the queue was massive. Uh, it was over two hours if you wanted to go and uh, have a test game, so I didn't actually get to test it. Uh, but it, I mean, it looked nice <laughs> from what I could see, and uh, the models are, are fantastic. So I'm looking forward to being able to paint some of those. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like for something that would be so kind of important that um, a few more tables could have been uh, available. There were some tournaments going on as well, and uh, there was also computer games from uh, different developers uh, being shown off, including the new Balkan game, which I'm quite excited for. Um, I've already pre-ordered that uh, for myself. Um, you can see here they had the uh, the, uh, the Titan Owners Club with a a big uh, Adeptus Titanicus game being played using uh, 40k scale models. So that was very impressive to see. Uh, so you know there was it, there was definitely a, an experience to be had if you turned up. Um, but for for me personally, it was all about the Golden Demon. That's really why I came uh, because I'm very interested in uh, model painting and. I'm there to, to talk to other model painters and you know just discuss uh, you know painting in general. So um, it, it's quite an exciting thing for me, even without any of this other stuff. So um, I can't be too critical of that uh, from my perspective because uh, the Golden Demon itself was um, you know it was fantastic. So you can see here I've started recording it. Uh, I d my intention was to try and record every model. Uh, but what happened was I started recording it and I realized that the number of entries that were there in the cabinets was insane. Uh, for Someone said that for 40k single model category, there were over 400 entries. So, you know, it was not going to be possible, possible for me to, to record everything. Uh, I was given access uh, later at night to uh, a special event where there was no general public around because there were, um, people were so interested to see the Golden Demon it was very hard to get to the cabinets and um, so for a, a, a few of the uh, people that had like large followings or whatever we were, get, we were granted access so we could go and photograph some things and so I spent uh, a few hours going around uh, taking recordings and uh, seeing what I could do. Um, unfortunately, my 
videography leaves a lot to be desired. I, I am mainly uh, like a you know, I do most of my work is involved with painting and teaching people how to paint, and that, you know, I record that painting. I don't uh, generally walk around with a camera, so um, the uh, the quality of the video is very poor. Uh, you probably see a few things out of focus or whatever. Um, I'm getting the hang of it, but <laughs> you know, it, it could be better. Uh, so apologies if uh, you see your model there and uh, it doesn't look great, or if I haven't spent long enough on each one. Um, I did want to show. Uh, each model clearly but just with that many like you've I can only afford a few seconds uh, on on each piece so uh, you know it is what it is um, I, the main thing that I wanted to do was just try and capture as many models as possible so that uh, people one can see their own entries in the cabinets if they they watch this uh, and two everyone else can see the the kind of things that were shown there now uh, another slight negative is the lighting in the cabinets was atrocious and I think the video kind of gives you an idea of that um, so this piece for example here this is uh, was the uh, first place Warhammer 40,000 single middle uh, single model uh, winner uh, you know you got the gold trophy it's amazing the painting on that and the detail but the light is so strong it sort of washes everything out and it barely looks any different to the uh, the other entries in the category so I mean that is a slight negative um, it's especially bad for certain techniques so if you have a, like a more expressive or a brush stroke then the, uh, the the brush strokes are so visible on the model because the lighting is very harsh and also because it washes out the colors uh, things don't pop as much um, so sometimes what I overhear is when people are there they talk about the um, the cabinets uh, the models in the cabinets um, not looking as good as they do in the photos um, but it really depends on the environment that you're looking at a model in uh, when these models are painted they're not placed on uh, you know under a giant lamp like this with you know terrible color and you know really close to the lights and it, it, uh, killing the painted under painting lamps and you know that's kind of where you should view them to get the, the best re uh, result of seeing what the, the models actually look like um, you know, so it's always worth bear, uh, taking that into account uh, because you know people do spend a long, long time on these, and um, it can be a little disappointing when people can be so critical of uh, the work that's been put into them um, because they're judging the models based on how they see them in the cabinets and not how they're supposed to be displayed. Um, you know, in a, like a, a more um, sort of uh, like a nicer sort of lighting situation anyway so you can see there's uh, there is a lot of models um, I'll go through what uh, so this was a lot there were a lot of questions on the day about this and people were getting quite confused but you can see the stickers on the cart next to the models and also there are some pins uh, because of when I filmed this uh, when I was filming it at night the judging was actually taking place at the same time uh, so some of the models have been taken out of the cabinets uh, and unfortunately I just couldn't film them because the judges had them um, so you know I did the best I could um, but the the stickers so if you had a green sticker on your card that meant you had made the first cut and that meant you were probably going to be a finalist and you'll get a finalist pin uh, the orangey yellowy stickers uh, that meant that the model that you had uh, entered was fragile now all of these mod models are fragile you know you can't go knocking them or anything but uh, some people when they build models they will have like flying things on like tiny little wires and stuff like that and even like just gentle knocking can damage the uh, the piece so those are so that the judges know to be extra careful when handling the model that this could easily uh, be broken there was a purple sticker and that was if you entered on the Sunday so you were able to enter the competition from Friday uh, through to Sunday at 12 p.m. Uh, you couldn't at, you know 12 p.m. was the cutoff point but if you entered on the Sunday it meant that there had been two previous days where people were, were entering and then if your model gets put in the cabinet they've already been through these cabinets so they don't necessarily know which models had been entered and which uh, uh, newly entered and which ones hadn't. So a purple sticker was put on so that the judges then knew to go and check out that model to see uh, if it was going to be uh, progressing to the, uh, the finalist stage. 
Uh, there's also a blue sticker. The blue sticker is more like the the model's been uh, sort of photographed or you know something of interest about it. it. Doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad or better than anything else. Uh, but it you know so that can be quite confusing as well. Uh, also, there were grey stickers, and I think those were put there to show that the mo the judges had looked at the purple stickered pieces. Uh, however, I don't, I'm not sure how consistent they were. And it's also really important to remember that for all these stickers, uh, they're not there for the general public. So even though people are trying to figure out what's going on, uh, that is purely for the judges' benefit, so that they know what to look at closer, what's being advanced, and things. Because as I said, there's so many entries in this Golden Demon that uh, it's impossible to to remember what's what. So the, the stickers are really important just for keeping track of everything. If you got a finalist pin, the judges would take your uh, take all of the uh, the finalist pin pieces and they take them into a like a little fenced-off area in the middle, and that's where the judging would be done. So the judging was done completely hidden and you had no idea what was going to win. It used to be at Golden Demon that when the top three pieces had been selected, they would be put on the top shelf of each cabinet and everyone would know that those three pieces had got a, tr uh, a trophy. They didn't tell you whether it was gold, silver or bronze, but you definitely knew if you were in the top of the cabinet that you had a trophy. That has been changed now. Um, and the judges like to have a little bit of fun, uh, so to keep everyone guessing. And now they have the commended entry thing. So what happens is from all the finalists, they pick, depending on how many entries there are and just the, the quality of the pieces overall, but generally five or six pieces within a cabinet, uh, with you no, know, not just like within a category, um, will be given a commended entry card. Uh, so you might see the odd one or two uh, in the video as well and those are black cards and they just they say golden demon commended uh, entry and it's like uh, in gold lettering uh, you know it looks very nice uh, and it's from those pieces that the three trophies will uh, be selected so the, i mean there's different um stages to to get through it's not just a case of uh, they just pick winners from like everyone's models because it's it's too hard to do something like that you know uh, it's much easier to just very quickly go through and decide if uh, things uh, are going to be moved to a next stage where uh, in each successive stage there'll be more and more focus put on each piece uh, so it, it's probably beneficial when you're painting your piece to have something that's very eye-catching um, so you know it's more likely that the judges be interested to look at that further Whereas if you've painted something that's very dull and drab, even if it's painted very well, it could still be overlooked because it's just not sort of um, cap capturing anyone's interest. Although even then, like the judges are, they are very very professional and they can tell just at a glance really if the the quality of the paintwork is uh, you know going to be suitable to to take the thing to the next level. Uh, so you have the your committed entry there. And um, so what they do is when they finish the judging, they, they bring the models back and uh, on the sort of top shelves, there'll be these five or six or more, depending on how busy the category is, um, models and they will have the committed entry and the finalist pin next to them. People get a little bit confused because uh, they think that uh, finalist pin sounds more important than commended entry. And to be fair, I think the pin does look better than the card. Um, but a few people have been like, you know, if you say you've got a commended entry, then someone else has got a finalist pin. They think the finalist pin has done better. But that's not the case. It's the other way around. The commended entry is the really important one. And that's that's as far as you will know uh, for whether something has won a trophy or not. So the, there'll be these models with the, the card and that's it. Um, once the judging's finished, everyone's left not knowing who's got a trophy uh, we all have our like our ideas about what we think is going to win and it's quite fun that's part of the fun of golden demon actually is to go around and see uh, and sort of like make your predictions of, of what you're going to win uh, what you think is going to win um and i managed to uh, correctly um select the uh the slayer sword winner it was my uh, favorite piece in the competition uh the uh, the elf from the age of Sig 
Sigma single unit category. Uh, it's a fantastic piece. The the photos don't really do it justice. The amount of detail and the brush control and like just the the lighting and the composition. It's just it's a fantastic piece. Um, and that is one of the benefits of going to uh, a Golden Demon to, to see the models in the flesh. Now I mentioned that the cabinets can uh, be quite detrimental to how you view the pieces, but. Uh, it is a case as well that the models will be taken out of the cabinets by the painters at some point, uh, either, well, before they're put in into the cabinets or at the end where you collect the model. Uh, there will be uh, models available for you to to view if you're very nice to the painters. Um, they will let you have a look at their model. And you can see it in uh, without the, the harsh lights on top of it and you get like a much better impression of how good the, the quality of the painting actually is. Um, but after the uh, you know all all the judging is judging is done, then an, an announcement is made, and you're taken to a uh, a room like a big room, and everyone's separated out. So if you have a commended entry card, that was like your pass, and you're taken down to the front of the like a big auditorium. Uh, you have the first uh, three rows that reserved for the commended entries, and everyone else gets to sit at the back uh, because. For the, for the first time, the way they've done it at this Golden Demon is all of the commended entries for each category had to go on stage. And so you were all lined up and then the winners were called out while everyone was on stage. So you've got your bronze, silver and then gold. Um, for me, that was terrifying. I don't like being in front of large crowds. So... Um, yeah, but it, I mean, it was an experience. <laughs> um... Uh, th there is there's a certain amount of drama and uh, sort of like ceremony that's kind of created by doing it this way so I can understand why people enjoy it um, but I'm like kind of a, a very introverted person so it's, <laughs> it's a bit a bit more scary for me um, but then after that uh, what you go back to your seat and all of the gold winners they have to stay on the uh, the very front row because at the the end of the uh, when all the categories have been announced then uh, the gold winners all have to go back up on stage because the Slayer Sword winner will be um, called out from those. Uh, so it's it's quite fun. Um, people get very very stressed. You can see them on the stage. Or, you know they're they're sweating and they're you know shaking a little bit or whatever because they um, the adrenaline's going and everyone's watching you. Uh, so I mean it's a bit of a, a strange thing because if you think like we're all painters and we're like most of the time that we've spent on the models we've been sitting at a desk on our own uh you know very isolated and then we're having the, the actual competition when it comes down to it we're all, like put on the spot in front of um hundreds of people uh, with bright lights in your face and you know it's quite a a jarring <laughs> experience to go from one to the other uh the uh the, the models on the screen here actually you can see um, there was some there was a very broad range of entries uh, in both quality and creativity uh, it, it's a very diff difficult thing I think uh, when uh, you you're looking at the entries and then what happens is that all the winners are photographed and then put on the uh, the games workshop uh, Warhammer community website and uh, then people start discussing what they think should and shouldn't have won. And it's not really a fair way to judge. You can't judge uh, models properly from photographs, especially when it's like somebody else that's taken the photo of your model. So they don't necessarily know the golden angle um, from the you know the main position that the model's been painted at. Um, the, the light setup might be overly harsh. Uh, and particularly the way Games Workshop photograph models, I think they're more set up for the way of the heavy metal painting is done so um, you know it picks out the details and things but uh, there are other styles of painting and some of them can be quite subtle and what happens is if, if you have like a slightly overexposed image or something like that it can make these very subtle details look quite sharp and sometimes look a little bit messy even but they don't actually look like that when you see them in the flesh uh, so it, it is it's a bit unfair when you're looking at models on the uh, the winners page uh, you know to say which should and shouldn't have won um also like the judges have a very hard time on on some of these things uh, i think this is one of the hardest competitions i've ever seen uh, so i've, I've judged uh, painting competitions myself and i know how difficult it can be and 
in this particular case, there were a lot of very, very well painted pieces. And the problem was there were so many, well, like, that says a level of, um, you know, basically finalist pins, uh, that sort of large band of painters, uh, they're so, the quality is so good within that band, uh, then to select the winners from it, that, uh, you know, it's just so many to, to get through. And like, if models are not painted quite as well, generally, it's easy to pick them out um, compared to the very good ones. But when there's so many really well painted pieces, even if they're not quite up to a, a trophy standard, like if they're just below it, but there's a, a lot of them and you know, it's very hard to you know, to, to go through that, that number of pieces. And there were definitely entries that I saw in this that uh, got finalist pins that in other Golden Demons, they could have had a commended entry or maybe even trophies. Uh, you know the the quality of uh, you know the so many entries was so high uh which w was fantastic for me but it must have made it very difficult for the uh, the judges it's also quite interesting to see uh, with the entries so there are obviously a lot of new painters that they enter at golden demon and they don't go with any expectation to win but they just want to show off the models and i think uh, for me personally, that's the the most interesting uh, point of the competition is just to kind of like go and celebrate having all these models on display and seeing all the work that people have put in. And then, you know, so it's kind of like almost like a, a museum or something like that, you know, just going around seeing all these displays and being inspired by what you're seeing um, because people have so many ideas, like amazing concepts. Even like, if you go and look at the, the young bloods, so... Uh, you know, quite young painters, the, the concepts that they come up with, even if their painting standard hasn't quite progressed yet to the level of the uh, the main golden demon, the, the concepts and the, you know, like the colours that they use and all sorts of things like that, uh, they can be as good as or better than the winners from the other categories. Uh, so, you know, it, it's exciting for the, the future of uh, model painting as well, but also like in a kind of cheeky way I can go around and look at these things and be inspired and maybe just borrow ideas from the things that I see uh, to kind of like incorporate those into my own work um, and you know, before anyone says oh that's copying uh, you know that, that's generally what artists uh, have done for a long time you don't just create something out of nothing you have to be inspired and then adapt it to uh, what you what you like the look of um, I'm always advocating for people to go and look at artwork and like codex covers things like that um, just to like to be inspired to get excited uh, for things that you're going to paint and see you know to, to help you create uh, new ideas There were a few entries that I thought were... Um, so th there is an issue with Golden Demon in that the categories can be quite uh, strict with the uh, what you have to incorporate into them. So you have things like a diorama category and a unit category. Now in the unit... Well, you have uh, 40k and fantasy uh, unit categories. And if you look at some of the uh, the entries for the the unit categories they've been designed almost like dioramas but the problem is uh, if and this actually is something that happened to the uh, previous Slayer Sword winner Neil Hollis when he uh, went to UK GD last year and he entered his uh, Lazarus uh, Dark Angel model and he had done uh, created for that uh, like a nice big base with a stained glass window behind it and that had been entered into the 40k single model category uh, but it's still relevant because as I, meant, as I said like it's the fantasy unit and 40k unit and things people have been doing them as dioramas and the judges decided looking at Neil's piece that actually it was more of a diorama than it was a 40k single model so it got moved to the diorama category but unfortunately Neil hadn't created that piece as a diorama so it didn't actually work very well as a diorama in comparison to the other people that had actually created dioramas so he didn't place with the model even though it was painted amazingly it wasn't a good diorama so even though it was more diorama than single figure it still wasn't a good diorama and so he didn't get anything uh, for it so he took that model uh, he took off the base created a new uh, smaller simpler base took it to Adepticon entered it in the Golden Demon there and then it won him the Slayer Sword and I think that's a perfect example of how if you get 
some of the criteria for the category wrong, regardless of how well it's painted, you can come away with nothing. And so this is why sometimes people get a little bit confused when they can see some of the entries and they're like, well, why hasn't this piece won? Or why hasn't that piece won? It's very well painted. And it can just be a case of you haven't hit the correct criteria for the category. Uh, so you have to be a little bit careful. And it, I do feel that a lot of the entries um, were bordering on multiple category um, you know, criteria and especially some uh, some of the uh, the squads and things they'd been the paint they glued onto the base all in like a diorama setting and if you start adding little bits of detail or maybe a, an enemy model dead on the floor and things and it, it is it has basically become a diorama and then it's a lot harder for you to you know the chances are that you might get moved to a diorama category and then you're going to struggle in that category uh, you know, so it is worth bearing things like that in mind. Um, the other sort of big issue with uh, the Golden Demon, and it's not actually Golden Demon, it's the Open Competition. And so people don't really realise this, but the Open Competition is not a Golden Demon uh, competition. Uh, it's a separate competition that is run alongside the Golden Demon. So uh, the Open Competition uh, allows Games Workshop staff to enter as well. But it's also there for... Um, for you to be extra creative so you can enter large scale pieces um, complete custom sculpts things that wouldn't fit into the other categories basically uh, so if you had things like say an inquisitor model from the the inquisitor uh, board game from a few years ago then uh, you know those are quite large scale figures and they wouldn't fit into the any any of the other categories so you could enter that into the open competition as well and one of the issues is and you, you've probably seen this uh, a few times in previous Golden Demons. People enter, oh, people pay to have custom sculpts made for them. And these custom sculpts are done by professional sculptors and they can look amazing. And then you paint, when the artist gets them, they paint them. Uh, and they, because you would be a professional artist if you paid a lot of money to get a, a sculptor to paint, uh, to create something for you. So it, tends to be look to look amazing and people get a bit confused because they think oh that means I can enter products from other companies and that's not the case and so you get some like third party um, companies that use uh, very similar models to Games Workshop's IP and you can't enter those into a Games Workshop competition they won't be given any awards and there were definitely some of those entered into uh, this uh, this open competition and so I think again people can be confused when they see some of these models because some of them can be painted very very well and they'll get nothing and then it's like oh why did it not get anything it's because it's um, it's another company's model that's probably stolen the uh, the IP from uh, Games Workshop as well so um, yeah that that's just not gonna work uh, but that doesn't mean to say that you you can't have like you can have it if you wanted a completely scratch built model you could sculpt it yourself you could have someone else sculpt it for you and you could enter that in any of the categories if you wanted um and it's just it's purely based on the scale so for example here we have the age of sigma single model uh category and if you wanted you could go to a sculptor you could say can you please sculpt me a model i'll pay you for it you get a custom sculpt you paint it it will be perfectly valid to enter that into the uh, Age of Sigma single model category and it could perfectly well place. Uh, so it's not getting someone else to make a model for you, it's if it's somebody is selling models that use Games Workshop intellectual property. Those will not be um, you know, given any... Uh, they, they, they base, they're not necessarily disqualified but they're not going to be uh, given any trophies either. So you can see here uh, what I was talking about earlier, where like early on I was trying to get photos of uh, everything, and it just it it was impossible. Uh, so I thought I'll just try and go through the cabinets, record what I can, see if I can get some things in focus, and uh, and then you th this is what um, I ended up with. I I do plan to uh, go to to more golden demons, obviously, and I will be uh, recording. Uh, as much as I can, uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, figure out a way to get some uh, some better 
images. Although, of course, it does, again, depend on the <laughs> the cabinets, the lighting in the cabinets a little bit. Um, I kind of wish that they would just turn the lights off in the cabinets. I know that sounds a little bit scary and people will be like, oh, I can't see the models very well. But actually, the harsh light is so detrimental to the, uh, the look of the models that... Um, like a dull light you could still see them more clearly than you can with an overly exposed harsh light uh, so like, uh, don't be confused when you see this in the camera like the the settings on the camera have adjusted down the lighting so it looks quite dark but these were very very heavily lit um, so I've tried my best to for you to be able to see what was there um, but the image quality is not as you know good as it could be I will be doing a separate video on my entry. Uh, if you've been following any of my uh, social media posts, you probably would know that I entered a vampire unit in the Age of Sigma uh, unit category, uh, and I ended up with a commended entry. So, uh, like, I mean, I suppose I was a little bit disappointed. I didn't mind too much. I kind of like had suspicions that I had uh, gone a little bit wrong with uh, the the selection of my unit, and. Unfortunately, the judges weren't giving any feedback for this Golden Demon, uh, which was, uh, I, I feel it's slightly disappointing, but I also understand it. Uh, you know, they've been judging for a long time. Their brains are completely fried and it's very hard to give suitable information to a lot of people. Um, but it, it would be nice if they could, you know, spend 10 minutes or whatever, just for a few people, just, to, uh, just so that they know uh, what they could improve on their pieces. Um, what actually what I ended up doing is giving feedback constantly over the weekend. Uh, so I mean, it, it it might be the case that you don't get any feedback from the judges, but there are a lot of pro painters at these events that will give you feedback if you just ask them. So uh, you know, don't be shy to go and talk to pro painters. Uh, we all, well, not even pro paint. Like, so people get a bit confused with this as well. So I make uh, money from. Uh, painting models and teaching how people how to paint but there's a lot of people and including the slayer sword winner uh and the previous slayer sword winner the, the both guys uh, they are they are not professional painters they are just normal people they have regular jobs and uh they just have a, a passion for painting so they don't make money from painting models uh, so they're not pro painters they're just very very good at it uh, and the meaning of pro painter is just that you make money from painting models but yeah you know, just come and ask people, uh, Ask, come and find your favorite painter, ask them what they think about your model, and they will give you very detailed, comprehensive feedback. And they probably can spend a little bit more time uh, going into it than the Golden Demon judges would as well. Uh, and also bear in mind that Golden Demon is not the be all and end all of model painting, and they have like kind of a more specific look to their pieces that they require to, for their pieces uh, to win a trophy. And there are a lot of people that paint Golden Demon things that also paint other models and don't just go in for uh, for Golden Demon competitions. And so they have uh, styles of painting or uh, techniques and things that maybe are not necessarily suitable for the competition or, um, you know, it, it's just a lot more varied anyway than uh, what you might think from just from looking at these pieces and they can give you tips and advice uh on the like other areas of painting as well and not just about how to win a golden demon but how to like improve your painting in general uh it, and it might be a case of like you want to improve uh say uh, a non-metallic metal uh, style of painting and the the golden demon judges are not necessarily going to um give you the the same advice as somebody that paints uh, say uh, for Monte Sansovino and wants to do uh, you know does uh, like amazing uh, non-metallic metal pieces for that um, and also it that's something else as well that people get a little bit confused by and the the pieces when you enter them in Golden Demon uh, the, you tend to get styles and trends and in recent years non-metallic metal and OSL and you know so object source lighting uh, things like that have become more prevalent and people say you need to paint in non-metallic metal or it won't win you need to have object source lighting or it won't win uh, you can't use true metal paints because uh, it, it, you know the judges won't give it a trophy and it, none of that is true uh, there's plenty of pieces that uh, have won with uh, true metals um, you know the judges don't particularly uh, 
favour uh, non-metallic metal style painting. Uh, you know, if you came in with a, a really nice uh, true metallic metal uh, style of painting on your model, and, and there was like a, an amazing piece in the the jewel that won gold. It had amazing num uh, true metallics uh, on the barding of the horse and the knight's armour. So it's not about um, selecting these uh, trends uh, to win. You just have to pick something that you like and then go with it and then paint it to the best of your ability. Uh, and again, like you don't have to have uh, like so you can paint in the heavy metal style. So that would be very heavily biased towards edge highlights. And some people think, oh, heavy metal will uh, the golden demon will only award things that follow that style of painting. And that's not true either. Indeed, the the slayer sword uh, that won the the elf that's nothing like heavy metal style painting. Uh, but then the previous one that won, the, the Dark Angel uh, Captain Lazarus, that was uh, a more heavy metal style of painting. Uh, and you can see, like, if you just go through, just look at the winners. They're not they're not heavy metal style in general, but some people will enter them and still uh, win. And the other big myth is that you have to paint a new model to win, uh, which again is rubbish. The uh, the Slayer Sword winner for this time was like heavily sculpted uh, and and converted but it was based uh, like it had parts from some very very old models uh, incorporated into it and you know if you just look at the winners again you'll see there's a lot of them that aren't new models the idea that it has to be a new model to be selected as a winner is purely based on the fact that um, we're all hobbyists even if we do it professionally we love painting models and we get excited by new models so when a new model comes out that looks really cool we want to paint it and that's just what happens. Like, so if it's near a golden demon and a really amazing model comes out, and a lot of people will be like, "That looks like something I would want to paint." You know, spend a lot of time painting, and that's why those get entered. <laughs> it's as simple as that. There's no bias from the judges to select new models, and you can see that there are plenty of old models that win trophies. Um, but yeah, so there's all sorts of things that, you know, there's stories that keep going round, people have opinions that uh, get repeated and they're, they're just not true. Um, but the, the best advice I can give you for for going to Golden Demon is to just enter it, see what it is, uh, see what it's like, see how you do, come and talk to all the artists. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's my favourite thing while I'm there. It's just talking to everyone, seeing what they've done, getting you know the the thoughts on the you know the work, what we, and then trying to guess what's going to win, saying what we like and dislike about pieces. Um, and it's nothing wrong with saying if you don't like something as well, uh, but you just have to not be rude about it. it it's very simple, you know. If you say, oh, I'm, that's not my preference or whatever. Um, People sometimes mistake uh, saying something is good or bad for like and dislike, and those are not the same things. There are preferences in style, and um, like I have preferences in style that would, um, you know, so I prefer certain ways of painting than others. And so I personally really enjoy non metallic metals, I'm not so keen on true metals. Uh, although I can still see the beauty in them and when they're painted really well you can do some amazing results but for me painting in non-metallics is just my preference and I, I really like what you can do with that uh, but when I'm judging a competition that doesn't mean to say that if I see something that's painted with true metals I think oh that's not very good and then painting with non-metallics is automatically that is good uh, you still paint them good or bad and then you compare them and then uh, whichever has achieved the best results with the techniques and styles that they have chosen that's what wins it has nothing uh, you know whereas people will confuse what they like uh, to be a winner so they're not using um, like a detailed analysis of the piece and this can be seen with things like uh, when people see their favorite space marine character say uh, and it can be painted to a reasonably a reasonable standard and then there'll be a better piece and it'd be something uh, from maybe Age of Sigma and they don't like Age of Sigma so they automatically will say that the Space Marine looks better because their preference follows that it's a Space Marine from their favorite chapter um, you know so it, it's very important to be aware that your preferences are not important when judging the quality of the artwork <laughs> um, but there is also an element of artistry that uh, is very hard to quantify as well. 
so this was uh, my entry. Unfortunately, I when I was recording this, uh, the uh, my entry was in the this little secret room in the middle, uh, so I didn't get to film it in the cabinets because it was being judged at the time. Uh, as I mentioned, I got a uh, committed entry for this. Uh, so if you had a committed entry, that means that your painting was good enough to be competing for a trophy. And because of the legacy style of a uh, you know, tr trophy system where you only have one gold, one silver, one bronze, then you know there's three pieces going to get a trophy and the other ones will not. And it, it could be the case of that every single model that's got a commended entry is of a similar standard. They could be like exactly the same piece if you wanted. It could be 10 Slayer Sword winners in a category and they all enter exactly the same model. It's still only going to be one gold, one silver, one bronze. Uh, and it's not that the other ones weren't good enough. Um, that's what I tell myself anyway. So save me, save me crying to see myself to sleep at night. But um, I'm I'm pretty happy uh, with with how my entry came out anyway. I will do another video looking um, focusing on my entry and what I think I did right and what I think I did wrong um, and why I wouldn't change it anyway <laughs> because I'm just awkward. Um, but yeah, that that's. Uh, my video for for golden demon um if you did enter a, a model you know put in the comments and if you see it there um i apologize if it didn't look very good from my uh, terrible filming um but anyway i hope you enjoyed the video uh, thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time